20th century women who did not submit to traditional gender roles by pursuing a career outside their family or practicing lesbianism were quietly retired to special interest classes waiting to be unearthed. Born March 7, 1893 in East Troy, Wisconsin, Lorena Hickcock grew up in poverty with her mother, a dressmaker, and her father, a farmer. Lorena's father was the source of her family's misery. He was an abusive alcoholic who isolated her from society until her mother passed when she was just 13. At 14, Lorena was forced out of her home by her father and his new wife. Lorena had no choice but to work as a housekeeper for an Irish boarding house. Despite struggling with memories of her abuse, Lorena pushed forward to a train station to South Dakota. There, she saw her father for the last time and realized that she had autonomy in her own life. He would never strike her again. Lorena was a studious child who escaped her life through reading. She aspired to be an author like her role model, Edna Ferber. Lorena completed high school in Battle Creek, Michigan, and although her ambition led her to college in Appleton, Wisconsin, she ultimately dropped down. Instead, she wrote for the Battle Creek Evening News. Reporting politics was considered men's work, so she stuck writing personal interest stories. Then she moved on to the Minneapolis Tribune, where she was the chief reporter, unusual for women at the time. Lorena covered everything from politics to sports. The following years were eventful. Lorena was involved romantically with Ella Morse, a co-worker of hers. They lived together for eight years before they separated. In 1926, Lorena was diagnosed with diabetes that would stunt her already prolific career. Lorena continued regardless. She landed a job at the New York Daily Mirror and became one of the top correspondents for the Associated Press. By 1932, she was dubbed the best-known female reporter in America. 1928 was the year Lorena met Eleanor Roosevelt. Franklin Roosevelt was still on the campaign trail of the presidency, but the two women had grown exceptionally close. They were often found in each other's company, from Sunday dinners to theater outings. Lorena had even given Eleanor a sapphire ring for the inauguration where Eleanor remarked, Oh, I want to put my arms around you. I ache to hold you close. Your ring is a great comfort. I look at it and think, she does love me, or I wouldn't be wearing it. Despite these intimate displays of affection, historians insist there is a heterosexual explanation that Eleanor wrote to men, including biographer Joseph P. Lash, with affection, but nothing as explicit or romantic as Lorena's letters. Doris Faber insists Eleanor was straight by writing out the letters as an unusually belated school crush. The fact of the matter is, Lorena was openly a lesbian and fit into the traditional role of a man. By fitting into the Schindler binary, Lorena was easy to write off as a simple friend to Eleanor. Eleanor, however, played a much more important role in U.S. history. She was THE First Lady, the model that women at the time should strive to become. Eleanor was not conventionally attractive, and she strayed from a typical woman already. To think that she was in love with a homosexual was earth-shattering. Controversy began to swarm over the nature of their relationship. Nevertheless, Eleanor gave Lorena a job at the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, or FERA, where Lorena investigated American life in the South, exposing harsh realities of poverty and oppression. But even these accomplishments were swallowed by the media. The public speculated so much that Eleanor said that she couldn't be around Lorena in public anymore. It became harder for Lorena to find work. Eleanor privately supported her with gifts of money and landed her with another job at the Democratic National Committee. However, Lorena's health was failing. She didn't get to enjoy the position for very long. On May 1st, 1968, Lorena died from complications of her diabetes. To honor Lorena, lesbian feminist artist Rosemary Anderson immortalized her memory in the International Honor Quilt. The panel itself is handcrafted and simplistic down to the stitch. Lorena Hickok is frayed but rugged, much like the woman herself. South Dakota to New York subtly displays the movement of her career. The embroidered rose could be a callback to Lorena once describing herself as a rose in the sunshine whenever she get another news byline. Rosemary dedicated the panel to Lorena after reading Doris Faber's prejudice interpretation of Eleanor and Lorena's relationship. Rosemary explained by saying, I was moved to remedy the situation by making an honor quote for Lorena Hickok as a loving and respectful tribute to a lesbian devoted to the people with great capacity to give to others the companionship, the comfort, and warmth she often had to live without. 
even in modern times our society is not immune to undermining the accomplishments of lesbian women in history. Lorena Hickok was shunned by the media then and is mostly erased in academia now. Preserving Lorena's legacy as a resilient lesbian woman is vital to dismantling a homophobic aspect of gender discrimination. By reuniting Lorena with her lesbianism, our society reunites her with her humanity.